So this is a project I started quite a long time ago when I wanted to practice woodworking for the boat project. Um, I've not really worked with wood very much in the past and I knew that when I was building the interior of the boat I was going to need to do loads of woodwork and it needed to look quite nice. So I collected up loads of pallets and I just started making stuff out of them. Um, now this was a project, I did make a couple of little tables um, and I made these workbenches um, and I've made my router table um, and various other bits and pieces as practice but I wanted to make some things that looked quite nice um, and I especially wanted to practice laminating up um, timber to make slabs like this because my plan for the boat is to make my worktop in a similar way not out of old pallet wood um, but I do want to kind of make it like this um, so I wanted to practice and I made a couple of tables and then I started making this one. This is the biggest one I've made so far. I wanted to make this actually kind of nice. The others were functional um, and one of them had metal legs on it. I wanted to make this entirely out of pallets. So even the legs for this are made out of pallet wood. Uh, they're some old like pallet stringers. Um, so, and as a result, the wood isn't really nice. Some of it is nice. Um, I mean, this, this timber is really nice. I really like this grain. Um, and there's some really nice kind of detail in the knots. Um, but because it's from pallets, there are places where there have been nails. Um, it's a little bit crusty. I actually really like this piece, <laughs> to be honest. Um, but yeah, there was like a really, um, this part, um, the knot came completely out and there was a giant hole in it. So I've had to fill that. Um, and yeah, there's some, there's some sort of grey stains on it um, from where, I mean, I don't think any of these pallets were used with like chemicals, um, but just some of the timber had gone a bit grey. Um, but to be honest, I like that. It reminds me that this wood has got, is having a second life. Um, so the stage I'm at with this project is I've filled some of the holes and I need to sand it down again. Um, I've actually made this one a lot nicer than previous ones. Um, I've chamfered the corners um, and it, it's kind of got a bit of, um, a bit of a style to it rather than just function. Um, and the same with the legs. So I wanted the legs to be quite cool. Um, so these are kind of They've got a bit of shape to them. Um, they taper. Uh, I mean, you can't really tell from there, but they, they do taper um, in all directions. Because um, at the time I wanted to practice um, like setting up jigs and stuff on my uh, bench saw. Um, so yeah, I wanted to taper the legs. And then, yeah, I put this curve on them. So this piece sort of blends into this piece. Um, and again, that's all made out of pallet wood. As you can see, there's kind of nail holes in it. Um, and there's sort of, there's holes here. And I don't actually, I can't remember what that was for. But I mean, the pallets had holes in. So it's rough at the moment, but I'm hoping it will look nice when it's done. Um, so yeah, first job is to sand that filler down. <laughs> So I've got a bit of time on this again um, and I'm going to attach the legs to the top today um, and I'm hoping to get the, the legs trimmed as well because I left these kind of raw so to speak so um, obviously when this table is on the floor uh, and the legs are, are like that they're going to need to be parallel with the ground, uh, the bottoms of them so I just left them like that. Um, and then my plan is once I've got these legs attached to the, the top, then I'll just stand it on the floor, um, put a piece of timber up against here, 
uh, mark a line and cut the line. Um, so the first job is to get these attached, and I'm going to do that with these small, um, what are they called, insert nuts, uh, where these screw into the wood, and then they've got a thread down the middle of them. Um, and then I'm going to use some M6 screws, machine screws, to then fix through the legs into the top. So first job is to measure out uh, where these holes are going to go. Okay, so I've done a test in a scrap piece of wood um, just to check for the depth of the hole and the diameter of the drill bit that I need to use. Um, and it looks like I got it bang on first try. Seems pretty strong. Um, I think that's going to do the job. So yeah, uh, I'm going to drill the holes in this now. These have got a little Allen socket in them, so use an Allen key. I'm just using an Allen bit in a driver here to drive these in. That one doesn't feel great. I'm going to leave it there. Right now I just need to drill the holes in the legs and then counterbore them so that I can sink those screws into the surface. So I've marked out the positions of these holes um, and I've come across to my pillar drill which is absolutely knackered but um, it works well enough to do this job um, because I'm going to I'm gonna have a greater chance of getting these square uh, with the pillar drill versus the hand drill. So I think I actually hit a nail then. Um, these are sort of stringers from old pallets, so I thought I'd got all the nails out, but potentially there's still some in there. So I've got a drill bit, which is roughly the same diameter as the head of my bolts. I've set my depth stop to 10 mil. I can always go deeper if this isn't deep enough, but if you go too far, then it's gonna screw into the actual top of the table. So. I'm going to err on the side of caution and just do 10 mil first and then go a little bit further if I need to. There we go, job done. Right, I'm just going to test those and then see where we are. Right, let's see if these actually line up. Sort of all right. I can always enlarge the holes a little bit. No, it doesn't quite line up. Damn it. How has that happened? Oh, that's a bit too, no, that's not, not gonna line up either. Oh, I knew this would happen. Oh, what I should have done is drilled these first and marked those out with the drill bit. Oh well, it's too late for that now. I think what I'm going to have to do is enlarge these holes slightly to give me a little bit of wiggle room. So let's just run a bigger drill down them. Right, so I've, in, I've enlarged those holes slightly and <laughs> Looking at that now, they do line up. Um, so yeah, that's exactly why I'm doing this project because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to woodwork and 
techniques for lining, doing things like this. Um, so that was the whole goal of doing this, was to actually make something that doesn't really matter if it goes a bit wrong. Is that lining up? That's still not lining up. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much if this goes wrong. It's more about the learning process than the outcome, to be honest. It just needs a little bit more that way. I think it might be because of that nail, actually. The hole on this side has drifted a bit. Definitely. How can I remedy that? Okay, so I've slept on it. I've had a cup of tea or two. and I've got a cup of tea here. And actually, this is the first cup of hot, well, the first hot drink that's ever been on this coffee table. And it's on the underneath, which I quite like. Anyway, I've slept on it. I've had a think. And I realised this project is all about learning. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is so that I can mis make mistakes on this instead of making mistakes on the woodwork on the boat. Um, and then I realised that the solution to this problem of having these holes drilled in the wrong place is so easy to so solve. All I've done is move the legs out 20 mil that way and with this one 20 mil that way. I drilled through these holes into the top so that those holes definitely line up. I've put a new insert nut in and these old holes which now slightly stick out I'm just going to fill with wood filler. Uh, sand them off and then you, once it's stained you're not going to even notice them. Um, so the next thing to do is I need to cut these legs off so that they're parallel with the ground and my idea for that was to turn the table over, put a piece of timber on the ground or well on the desk in this case, draw a line across there and then that's my cut line. Same with that side, do it on all the legs and then they should be parallel with the ground and it should sit flat. So I'm going to do that now. Now I guess the, the next stage is to take it apart. I'm going to, although I like the little nail holes and stuff, because um, it reminds me that this was pallets once, I'm going to fill all these little holes, um, sand it, give it a final sand. I still need to sand uh, this piece of... Um, filler that I filled a while back. Um, yeah, so fill all the holes and imperfections, give it a sand, and then, then I can put the finish on, and then it's done. One eternity later. So I've sanded this down um, to a 240 grit. So that feels really nice on the hand now. Um, I'm going to apply the finish and I'm going to use Danish oil for this. Um, I usually prefer a lighter stain um, or no stain at all just to clear. But this has got these sort of grey parts where the palette has got something spilt on it and I've also got the areas where there's filler which is a slightly different colour to the wood and so in order to disguise those little inconsistencies I'm going to use this Canadian cedar uh, Danish oil which will sort of darken the whole thing a little bit. Like I say I don't really like a darker stain but in this case it's going to provide a function so I'm going to apply that with a, a soft cloth this is an old tea towel cut up. Um, I quite like this process it's nice and quiet there's no machinery going um, and you can just kind of have some peace and quiet while you do it.
So it's been a couple more days. Uh, I've got some time now. So the Danish oil is dry. All that's left to do is assemble it. I've got a cup of tea on the go. So let's get on with it. Done. And that's it finished. Time for a cup of tea.